I don't know about you, but it feels like everything in tech has been moving at a crazy pace. Google just held their I.O. conference, Apple's WWDC is right around the corner, and we can't ignore all of the advancements in artificial intelligence. But that's only a fraction of what's been going on. It would take forever to go through every single thing that piqued my interest in this space, so I thought I'd share some of the main software and sites I've been using and update those of you who commented on my previous videos about my thoughts on some of the apps I talked about. Links for everything in the description. First up is Arc. There is so much that has happened since my video from four months ago. The first big change is site search. By pressing command T and bringing up the search bar, you can now enter the name of a site you want to search like YouTube, press tab, then enter anything you want to search within that site. You can configure this for pretty much any website like Amazon, Twitter, and more. Secondly, there's air traffic control. Now I will admit I don't use this personally, but I can see just how useful it may be for some people. Basically, you can choose where links will open up in Arc. For example, if you have a workspace for entertainment and one for working on code, you could make it so that any link containing GitHub and Stack Exchange open in your code workspace, while any YouTube or Twitter link will open in your entertainment space. The newest update they've made is with Arc Boosts. As a refresher, boosts are bits of code and scripts that you can inject into websites to customize your experience. They've made this a lot more no-code friendly by creating what they call a boost remote that you can open on any site. From here, you can customize colors, fonts, the case of text on the site, and zap or remove any unwanted elements. This is basically the same thing as uBlock Origin's Element Picker tool, but it's nice that it's built into the browser. With only the style customization and zap tool, you can clean up a website and really make it your own. You can still put in your own custom CSS and other code if you want by clicking on the code button. You can also share any boosts you've created and browse the official Arc Boost gallery for ones that others have created to download. There's still the community-driven website called arcboosts.com, which has some useful boosts, but as Arc updates their boost gallery, I think it'll become obsolete. I got a comment from Khalid on how to use boosts, so here's an example. Let's download this Twitter boost, which matches the Twitter colors to the arc theme of the space we're in. And we can see that it definitely works. You can toggle these on and off, and you can find all your boosts in the library, which has now also been reworked. I'm really enjoying Arc, and I would be lying if I said I didn't get a little excited for each Thursday when they release a new update. Next up is Bento, a website that you could think of as a Linktree alternative, but it's a lot more than that. Although there are plenty of link and bio websites that have similar features, Bento is a completely free option for creating a personal page. I believe they are VC backed, and they plan on monetizing through taking a small portion of transactions that will happen on the platform over time, so think Gumroad and Patreon. Bento has some solid features that are constantly being updated and added by their small but passionate team, which I had a chance to talk to in December. They listen to user requests and implement features really quickly, like the ability to see how many people clicked on your page. If you've ever struggled claiming the username you want on something like Linktree or other websites, it'll be a bit easier to hopefully get the name you want on Bento. As an example, I was able to get bento.me slash p. The layout is simple and clean. You have a profile pic, which can be a static image or a GIF, and a bio underneath. Any link you paste in the website will show up as a new block that you can customize to different preset dimensions and change the displayed title and upload a custom image. The favicon is automatically detected, and sites like YouTube, Spotify, Twitter, among others, will have their own interactive elements like subscribe buttons for YouTube or a mini player for Spotify. You can also put in text blocks, images, videos, and section titles, and all of the blocks can be reordered by dragging them around. You can quickly toggle between a desktop and mobile preview. They've got an explore page where you can check out other people's pages for inspiration, and a Discord community where they're super responsive for any sort of support or feedback. Personally, I haven't gotten around to making my Bento page nice and pretty since this is geared more towards those working in tech, creative fields, or content creators, but seeing this tool being launched and improving in real time has been quite cool. We can't have a tech video in this day and age without talking about ChatGPT, and I mean it's alright. But the Code Interpreter plugin along with other third-party plugins being rolled out slowly seem quite useful for doing data visualization. Seeing AI explain do different data viz tasks with it and having it read and output different file types was quite impressive, and it seems pretty useful for streamlining research workflows in the future. I don't have access to it yet, but I did get access to the web browsing plugin, which is honestly still quite limited. I think how this technology and others like it progress in the upcoming weeks and months will really depend on how legislators and institutions respond to it. Personally, I'm cautiously excited about the potential applications in the field of translational medical research that I'm working in, and systematic reviews and other time-consuming processes could also be an area where a supervised AI system might be incredibly helpful for. Moving on to my Notion setup, which some of you were curious about, it's very simple, just a dashboard with to-dos and three blocks each containing a page. 
one for planning meals and tracking workouts, one for taking notes, and one for putting random creative ideas and writing scripts for videos. I think it's easy to get carried away with making elaborate dashboards, but I really try to keep the excess to a minimum. Some of you also asked about Amy, and their team has been updating the app occasionally, with some added search functionality along with features related to contacts and attending meetings with other people. But I can't really test those since I don't really know anyone else who has Amy and they're still doing the whole waitlist thing. I still haven't received any invites I can give people, and I'm not really sure if this is a scalability issue, but I'm not a big fan of seemingly every new website and app having insanely long waitlists and closed betas. Otherwise, I'm really happy with Amy and have been using it as my daily calendar. And speaking of some other apps and websites I've been keeping my eye on, but have those dreaded waitlists once again. There's Beeper, which is an all-in-one messaging app, and Quill.do, which is a block-based website editor. Maybe when I get off the waitlist for them, I'll make a review, but for me personally, gating access to people when the product is available to a select few really kills the hype and momentum for these products in the long run. If you've watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. The fact that this channel is nearly at 1,000 subs is pretty crazy to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and what sorts of tech you've been using in your day to day. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for any videos you'd like to see from me in the future.